All right, so there are a few really common mistakes I see newer banjo players make on the thumb pluck. And I recognize these problems because I had them too. And if you're not careful, sort of learning these wrong and ingraining this into your muscle memory is gonna build bad habits that are gonna stunt your playing later. So we're gonna fix that. So when I say thumb pluck, I'm talking about any time in claw hammer banjo, your thumb sounds a string. Uh, so that could be uh, just the thumb pluck of the blum diddy. Uh, or it could be drop thumb. And I want to say it took me a pretty short time of watching others when I was starting out to develop these bad habits and they stunted my playing down the road. Uh, so I want to save you the years of trouble I had trying to break these habits. Let's get into it. So before we start, let me just ask you for a quick favor. If you could just hit like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. It really helps me grow, helps me make more stuff like this. And if there's stuff you wanna learn, uh, songs, techniques, whatever, drop them in the comments below. You know, I wanna make what you guys want. So put them in the comments and I'm happy to help. Okay, so mistake number one is not digging your thumb into the fifth string. This is something that's really easy to miss if you're just watching others, but when you do that claw hammer banjo stroke, you are really digging your thumb into the fifth string. So I'm going to show you on close up here, the thumb should really, like you should be able to see an indent in your thumb on the fifth string. Like you've hooked it with the meat of your thumb. So when I drive in, anytime I'm hitting those strings, I am coming to rest with the string in my thumb. So the problem you're gonna have if you don't do this is it's gonna mess up your rhythm. Uh, and that's kind of the thing that links all these mistakes together is that they will mess up your rhythm and rhythm is sort of the heart of claw hammer banjo. You really don't wanna mess that up. Uh, so the problem is basically, if I don't hook the fifth string with my thumb, if I don't really sink in there, now I have to make an extra plucking motion to sound that fifth string. So if I'm kind of doing that bum ditty and I'm making that extra motion, see, it's not quite right. It's not quite in time. You can compensate for that, but it's just gonna be a lot easier if you just learn to sink your thumb into that string. And I think it helps with your overall rhythm too, because the one thing that's consistent is that your thumb is hitting a string, not necessarily the fifth string, but a string on every downbeat. And you can kind of think of that like, that, like a drum beat, you know, um, even if you're not hearing it, you're not impacting the head or whatever else, you know, playing up here, like that feeling of your thumb hitting the fifth string really solidly will help your rhythm. So as you come in, just thinking about digging in to your thumb with the string, and that will really help. It's the same thing for drop thumb. So you're just gonna dig in on a different string than the fifth. All right, mistake number two, not making your thumb pluck loud enough. This is like a timidity issue, right? People uh, worry about, oh, it's the same note over and over again and they back off it a little bit. But that drone note is one of the beauties of claw hammer banjo. Don't miss out on that. Uh, so make your thumb plucks loud. Plus it's always easier to learn to play loud and dial it back later as the mood of the song dictates. However, play loud by default is gonna sound good. It's gonna give it that distinct claw hammer sound. Now this can be related to the first mistake. So if you're not digging in with your thumb, it's gonna be hard without making a weird plucking motion to get solid volume. So just think about when you are dug into the fifth string, you're just going to lift off. Same thing for drop thumb, you want the notes to sound even. And the best way to do that is to just make sure that your thumb pluck is about the same volume as your index finger strike. All right, mistake number three, I feel like this is the uh, worst habit you can have and it's one that I suffered from for years. In fact, I'm gonna be honest, if you watch some of my videos, I still do this occasionally. Um, this habit is a beast to break. And while I've gotten better, it can still affect me. That old muscle memory creeps in. So really watch out for this one. And what I'm talking about is making a plucking motion with your thumb. You do not want to do this. So let me show you what I mean. You see how my thumb is moving ahead of my hand, right? 
And this is really going to mess up your rhythm when you play faster. In fact, really, I would say anything that sort of compromises the integrity of this claw position is going to mess up your rhythm. So you want to kind of watch for that. Are you changing the sort of angle of your fingers in relation to each other at any point? Is the claw coming apart? Like anytime you do that, that's that should be a, a sign like, oh, what am I doing here? Am I messing up my rhythm? Because that claw hammer banjo stroke basically never changes no matter what you're doing. The only thing that changes is the distance between your striking finger and your thumb. Other than that, that integrity of the claw, <laughs> I like that. It's, uh, it's my new band name, Integrity of the Claw. Um, so that integrity of that, uh, you know, that hand shape is really important. Uh, and is you're not holding it rigid, but you do want it to sort of stay together as you play. So I'm going to show you how to do it the right way. And there's a really uh, handy way of thinking about this, I think, that kind of helps you understand that thumb motion. So you're not sort of plucking this way or this way. And that's that your thumb should follow your fingers. So when I come in, I'm just lifting straight off and I'm not changing the shape of my hand. My thumb follows my fingers. It doesn't lead. Right, And if you kind of think of that and go slow as you practice, uh, you're going to ingrain that into your muscle memory and it's going to make banjo playing in the future much, much easier. So I hope this helps. And by the way, um, I have a free 90 minute video course with all these basics in it that really go into detail. Uh, if this was useful for you, I think you'll find that really useful as well. Uh, okay, see you next time.